This is GTV. A hero is you. It's time to take a trip back to a time and a place that, in itself, was a trip back to a time and a place long lost, but never forgotten. A time when expansive adventures fit into mere kilobits. A place where bravery, friendship, and a hero's quest was all you'd ever need. Get ready to take a look back at the last great video game ever made. Stay here, because 3D.Game Heroes is 10. On November 5th, 2009, 3D Game Heroes was released in Japan for the Sony PlayStation 3. Unlike so many other games, its debut was not the moment that kicked off an exciting new era, forever changing the landscape. It was, if anything, the opposite. It was a capstone of an era that could never and will never be repeated, bringing the 30 years of gaming that came before it full circle for a brief moment. You can't really give an exact start date, but certain key events in the history of gaming built on top of one another, creating an industry that, by the late 1980s, was innovative, exciting, and emanating from Japan to the world. The technology from that time looks primitive to those of us here in the present, and it was. But, at the time, these games were creative, and engaging experiences that entertained millions. Growing up in those days meant that you grew up alongside the gaming industry as it grew as well. And it meant you followed the changes in technology that gave us these games. Hardware and software would come and go, upgrade and evolve, but the memories would stay. By the end of the 2000s, games barely resembled what they were in those early days that we, the lucky ones, born in the 1970s, knew so well. However, by the 2000s, those of us from that generation were now working within the industry. The 2000s were a time where technology was able to bring back many forgotten classics. Compilation discs appeared for the first time featuring Atari, Intellivision, and Sega games, as well as many titles from the arcades. Individual games were now able to be bought straight through your machine, downloaded from the internet. It put many games we loved back into our consciousness and introduced them to a new, younger audience. This resurgence of classic games created a contrast of styles, of vintage versus contemporary, and eventually new games appeared that adopted a style that was inspired from days gone by. Among this long list of games that would ride the wave of nostalgia would be a game known as 3D Dot Game Heroes. This game was born out of Silicon Studio, later known for Bravely Default. But 3D Dot Game Heroes was one of the very first games developed by Silicon. The game was born out of a simple demo made just for fun. This demo was enjoyable enough by the staff there that it became commissioned into a full game. Silicon Studio took to the project enthusiastically, gathering a large production staff of about 20 people. The game would feature a basic main quest, defeat the Dark Bishop Fuel and restore the Kingdom of Gotnia to peace. Along the way, the hero would meet interesting characters, travel colorful landscapes, upgrade his weapons and health, participate in optional side quests, unlock items and locations, and take a break with mini-games. The graphical style of 3D Dot Game Heroes would be a fusion of 2D pixels and 3D polygons, faithfully imitating games of the 8 and 16-bit eras. The landscapes would feature high-resolution textures in some places and be pixelated in others. The locations, enemies, and characters would borrow heavily from classic adventure and role-playing games of the 80s and 90s. Shopkeepers, inns, kings, dungeons, treasure, keys, dragons, slimes, and more are all present in Dotnia. Non-playable characters also offer helpful advice, just like in the days of old, and on more than one occasion speak in riddles or just incomprehensible nonsense. 3D Dot Game Heroes offers a wide variety of custom playable characters, each with different abilities and skills. Some fit well into the RPG world, and others are just silly. 
The game also features an editor for players to create their own character designs, export them, and share them online. The soundtrack of the game would receive a similar treatment, with classic three-channel beeps complementing real instruments such as piano, drums, woodwinds, and brass horns. The game would feature over 30 compositions, with calm, relaxing music for towns and rest areas, and more intense music in dungeons and boss battles. The development of the game was rather short for modern times, taking only 10 months from the original simple demo to finished game, with From Software, most well known for the Dark Souls a series of games, signing on as the publisher in Japan. As the game neared completion, Silicon Studio and From Software began a long-term promotional rollout of the game throughout the fall of 2009. Part of the campaign would highlight the game's blocky graphics by using the word 10, which means dot in Japanese, as a key phrase in the game's promotion. It all began on August 10th, 2009, when a countdown clock on the From Software site counted down for 10 days. When the countdown expired, 3D Dot Game Heroes was announced officially for the first time. The site offered details of the game as well as the release date, November 5th, 2009, with 115 meaning Yi Ko in Japanese, which loosely means in English, a good child, a very subtle wink and nod to the reward of having something fun to play if you were well behaved as a kid. The next phase of From's campaign took place on October 10th, 2009 with 1010 being proclaimed as Dot Day. On this day, representatives from Silicon Studio, From, and Irem showed off the finished game in public for the first time. Why was Irem on hand for the events? Because part of the hype for Dot Day was to announce that Spelunker would appear in 3D Dot Game Heroes as a playable character. Throughout October 2009, From and Silicon Studio took 3D Dot Game Heroes on tour and visited different game shops across Tokyo where players could try out the game, meet some of the staff, and pose with full-size figures of Spelunker and the hero. On November 5th, 2009, 3D Dot Game Heroes was released for the Sony PlayStation 3 in Japan. The game sold for 7,140 yen. 3D Dot Game Heroes received positive reviews in Japan. Famitsu Magazine gave the game a score of 30 out of 40, praising the game's graphics and music, which they said was a mix of the old and new from video games. However, the review criticized the game for not having much originality. On November 25, 2009, just a few weeks after the game hit the stores, a soundtrack album was released for 2,340 yen, featuring 39 musical selections from the game, 3-9 being Thank You in Japanese. The liner notes included artwork from the game, as well as stickers of the hero and other characters. Word spread of the game across Japan in magazines, online, and through word of mouth. The game also made waves in the West, where gamers wondered if 3D Dot Game Heroes would be playable in English someday, or just another game in a long list of games that would be left behind in Japan. It wouldn't take too long to find out the answer, as 3D Dot Game Heroes was announced for release in the US by Atlas, with a release planned for May 11, 2010. In the UK and Europe, the game would be published by South Peak Games on May 14, 2010. To help increase sales, the game was sold for $39.99. One of the big questions regarding the English version of 3D Dot Game Heroes would be its translation. The game was an homage to RPGs of days gone by, when games often had translation mistakes that were confusing, strange, or funny. By 2010, English localization had improved greatly, though sometimes the script would not match that of the original Japanese version. Atlas assured English-speaking fans that the game would have a correct, accurate translation, identical to the Japanese script, though any crazy talk would be there intentionally. In America, Atlas went above and beyond to ensure proper promotion of 3D Dot Game Heroes and to catch the eyes of its target audience. A web campaign was kicked off that featured a series of ads that imitated famous American TV commercials. The ads included some trademark 1980s phraseology as well. Atlas followed up with a contest after release, where players could submit their custom-made characters for fans to vote on the best designs. A 
Upon release in May 2010, 3D Game Heroes received high praise from gaming publications and websites. It probably helped that many game media outlets were now run by people who grew up on the games that 3D.Game Heroes takes its design from. Back in Japan, 2010 saw a first anniversary promotion where a 3D.Game Heroes themed area was available for a limited time on PlayStation Home. Despite the excitement and reviews, in Japan, 3D.Game Heroes was not a success. According to sales data, the game sold just over 17,000 units in 2009, failing to make an impact. In the West, sales were much higher, selling over 150,000 units, much more than Atlas had expected. Still, compared to other high-profile games released that year, a very low number. Perhaps in a fitting, ironic twist to the tale, 3D.Game Heroes stayed under the radar, like many role-playing games brought over from Japan in the good old days. Ten years later, 3D.Game Heroes remains obscure. Beyond the batch of initial reviews, the game disappeared from mentions online. On YouTube, except for the promotional videos by From and Atlas, no videos have ever been made about 3D.Game Heroes. It seems like nobody there has even heard of the game. Well, at least there's one tribute video now, and you're watching it. The kingdom of Dotnia is huge, and the challenge is immense. When we come back, a detailed look at the story and mechanics of 3D.Game Heroes. So what can you do in Dotnia? Once you're done messing with the editor, you just sit right back and you'll be amazed. These block mini games will keep you busy for days. What? Destroy all the blocks on the screen and block out. Gotta rock the blocks, and that's no doubt. Ways of enemies that are so intense. Black towers save the day in block defense. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Last, there's a mode where the fast can work it. Set your quickest times in the super dash circuit. 3D Dot Game Heroes got the blocks that rock under 40 bucks while it's still in stock. Awesome. Order it now, you'll be sad you missed them. Available exclusively for your PS3 system. 3D Dot Game Heroes. Your parents help you hook it up. PS3 systems sold separately. Fresh! In the distant past, a small land called Dotnia Kingdom prospered. The peace was upheld by the six magical orbs and their six guardian sages. But the Dark King coveted power. He captured the sages and hid the orbs. Evil monsters besieged the kingdom. But just when all hope was lost, a young man with a sacred sword arrived to rescue the six sages. Each sage empowered the youth with their orbs. And the light orb was formed. In the fierce battles that followed, when the youth pierced the Dark King, the light orb shined, trapping him inside a pulsing, dark orb. The youth was hailed as a hero, and tales of his bravery spread. The kingdom prospered, and the story brought visitors from afar. But the tale of the brave hero faded into myth. As the kingdom lost its charm, the visitors from other lands dwindled. Where did everybody go? King Tezro launched an inquiry, seeking answers. It became clear to him, people had lost interest in 2D worlds. And so, the king boldly declared, This is an age of 3D. Reform began, and hope dawned on the kingdom, as it upgraded from 2D to 3D. But the king's plans were interrupted by disturbing news. The dark orb was stolen by Fuel, a dark bishop with an evil plan. As monsters filled the fields again, the people could only pray for the emergence of a young hero like the one of legends. Years ago, that young hero feared a day like this would come. The Dark King was sealed, not slain. Calamity may strike our kingdom again one day. The young hero left his sword within the sacred forest, in case that comes to pass, knowing that one day a brave soul will claim it and overcome all evil. In the name of Dotnia, the young hero sealed his sword inside stone and vanished. A descendant of the young hero envisions this in a dream and awakens to begin his quest. He is summoned by King Tezro to revive the ancient sword from the sacred forest, believing he to be the true hero who can save Dogna. With a sword and shield given to him by the king, he sets off 
defeats the Stone Guardians, and retrieves the sword. From there, the hero meets a fairy named Lee, who will accompany him on his quest. The hero returns to the castle, where King Tezro tells him of the Dark Bishop Fuel and his desire for power. The king instructs the hero to find the six orbs that will be needed to defeat the Dark Bishop and save Dotnia from evil. And so, the journey begins. If you've played any action-adventure game from the good old days, then 3D Dot Game Heroes will make you feel right at home. The game is very easy to pick up and play. It combines many elements from a range of games to create a play style that is a pastiche of everything that never fully existed in just one game. It is both familiar and original all at once. The main function of the game is to attack, most often with the sword. You start the game with the weakest one, naturally, but have the chance to discover and earn newer, stronger swords each with different characteristics. Swords are upgradable in the game. You can visit a blacksmith and make your sword longer, wider, attack through walls, and have other unique abilities. There are 24 swords in all. Some swords are not actually swords, but are hammers and bats. There's even a fish. To get the most benefit from your upgrades, the hero needs to be at full energy. You can also find other weapons such as arrows, bombs, and a boomerang. The hero also carries a shield for defense. These are not upgradable at the blacksmith, but you can find stronger shields as you go. The shield's deflection is not automatic. You need to hold R1 to raise it. There are also a range of magic spells you can use. Some characters are stronger magic users than others. As you progress through your quest, you will learn reflect magic, ice magic, invisibility magic, and a few other spells to help you out of a jam. The collectible items in Dotnia are varied and are necessary to progress in the quest. The currency of Dotnia is gold, to play on Final Fantasy's Gil. Gold can be found in chests or by slaying enemies, which also drop apples on occasion that will restore a little energy. Red, blue, and green keys are found mostly in temples, but could be found elsewhere. The color corresponds to a specific lock in the game. Getting the super key, earned by reading every signboard in the game, opens any lock. But there's also the boss key, just for boss chambers in the temples. Small blocks are scattered around the kingdom and are used in exchange for newer swords, given by the king. Stores sell items like tents, which restore your energy, lamps that illuminate a temple, wonder dust which resurrects you, and wind wings which can teleport you to a previously visited area. Life and magic power can be increased by finding heart shards and magic vials in the game, as well as being rewarded with them in certain areas. You can move faster and have a charging attack with the dash boots, an item you can get as an upgrade from Deke's laboratory. Check back with Deke often to see what he's making next. There are also key items. These are not actually usable in the game, but exist in your inventory. Certain parts of the game are impassable without the required key item, while some are just for fun. A bestiary is available in the game, but it's up to you to fill it out. You can earn the bestiary book by trading the small ring found in the desert temple. Then the hero can use the book, like a weapon, attacking enemies with it. Each enemy has a set number of hits before it's registered in the bestiary. The game also has an overworld map and temple maps that expand as you explore through the kingdom of Dotnia. As well, while traversing the overworld, you'll have your map on screen, telling you where you are. There are timed events that unlock the best items in the game. The easiest to access is the From Cave, located near the castle. After clearing each temple in the game, a new character will appear, having something interesting to say. If you clear the next section of the game without returning to the From Cave, the next character will not be there, and you'll be locked out for the rest of the game. There are other timed events in Dotnia that are going on in the background. Some characters may sound like they're speaking nonsense, but may actually be asking for help that gets rewarded later down the line. Some of these events will disappear after certain temples are cleared, so be on the lookout for them and try to interact with everything you see. On top of all of that, there are three difficulty modes. Normal mode is your standard game. From mode has stronger enemies, and Spelunker mode lets you play as classic gaming character Spelunker in the most difficult mode of all. Spelunker, just like in his game, can't take any damage, nor can he fall very far without losing life. The overworld music is also changed to the short but catchy Spelunker theme. 
Some non-playable characters will change their lines to belittle Spelunker's abilities as well. You can start the game in Spelunker mode by entering your name as Spelunker in all capitals when you start. As a side note, Spelunker is found in normal and from modes, trapped and in need of rescue. Tired of adventuring and want to take a break? 3D.Game Heroes features three mini-games based on classic games that aren't exactly found in the RPG genre, but are still revered. Dash Circuit is a racing game, modeled after single-track arcade racers like Super Sprint. Clearing each course under a certain time will earn you small blocks and gold. Blockout is a paddle and ball game like Breakout or Arkanoid. Bounce the ball around and break the blocks to clear the stage. Different colored blocks take more hits to clear, and your paddle can also catch items that drop for upgrades. Clearing all the stages will earn you the Luck Mallet, a hammer that's helpful in maxing out your goal. Block Defense is a strategy game similar to Rampart. Enemies will march in a line to attack your towers placed on the map. The army must fend them off and defeat them all before they destroy all your towers. This minigame is fairly in-depth and some sessions can take nearly an hour. Clearing all levels without taking damage will earn you goal, small blocks, and the worm sword. Many of the swords, items, and events aren't vital to finishing the game, but you will need to encounter everything in the game to receive a platinum trophy. A complete walkthrough of the game would take far too much time to cover here, but in short, to get a 100% completion of the game and the platinum trophy, you need to complete all three modes of difficulty, clear all three minigames, collect all small blocks, swords, shields, and key items. You must also defeat enemies with every kind of weapon, including arrows and bombs, complete the bestiary, max out your life and magic meters, and defeat each boss without taking a hit. There are missable trophies on top of that, where you need to rescue the princess and take her to the inn. Then, there's a trophy for failing to rescue the princess as well. You also need to make a character in the editor at least once and have exactly 777 gold on hand at least once in the game. It sounds daunting, but across three quests, many of the trophies work in conjunction with that quest, notably the no damage trophies that can be earned in Spelunker mode, as Spelunker can't actually take any damage. That's how you play the game, so good luck, brave hero. But what of Dotnia and its people? When we come back, the good stuff. All the references, jokes, and quirkiness that made 3D.Game Heroes one of the greats. Snake uses its rattle to announce his presence. He's been knighted by a queen bee. He builds giant evil stone golems with lasers because it's fun to blow them up. When he goes fishing, he throws back anything under 600 pounds. Dragons consider him a boss. He is the most interesting hero in 3D. I don't always say Cadence, but when I do, I prefer Dadia. Visuals, music, and gameplay styles of 3D.Game Heroes are enough to hook anyone who grew up on 8-bit adventures, but the game goes above and beyond by filling the game with hundreds of references to the games of days gone by. 3D.Game Heroes' main influence is clearly from everyone's favorite vintage adventure game, Dragon Quest. The default character is designed to look like that from many of the early Dragon Quest games. This character's name is the Hero, which is the same character class used in Dragon Quest. The ancient hero is a reference to Loto, Erdrick in some English versions. The king and his room is modeled perfectly after those in Dragon Quest. Also, recording thy deeds on the Imperial Scrolls of Honor, a colorful way of saying save your game, is done in the king's room, 
the townspeople also have a strong resemblance to those from early Dragon Quest games. There are slimes everywhere in the game. Dragons, golems, and other enemies that were heavily influenced by Dragon Quest will be there as well. Oh, and the loading menu music is an homage to the Dragon Quest menu theme. Then there are several specific points in the game that reference Dragon Quest. Bluesy the Slime, who wishes to be a human, is a reference to Healy from Dragon Quest IV. Then there's also the fortune teller and sister who ran out of money, similar to a scene in IV. The dream sequence with Sorrow and Rosa from IV also appears after staying at certain inns. The princess in Ortego Village wants to enter the fighting tournament just like Princess Elena from IV. Ortego itself is a reference to Ortega from Dragon Quest III. The man in Ray Jack Village who can't choose whom to marry, the rich girl, or his childhood friend, happened the same way in Dragon Quest V. The Poof Poof refers to the Puff Puff, found in many Dragon Quest games, which as an aside was censored in the 8-bit Dragon Warrior versions. But that isn't the only game! The second obvious influence is The Legend of Zelda. The overworld and temple layouts in the game imitate the first Zelda game. Don't forget the scrolling map, life and magic meter, as well as many items. The boomerang, bombs, wire rod, arrows, and flame wand are all taken from Zelda. The silver ring acts like the blue ring, reducing damage by one fourth, and the gold ring acts like the red ring, reducing damage by half. The hero sword is found in the same way as the magical sword is found in Zelda 1 by pushing a tombstone. And while on the subject of swords, the hero holds up a new sword or other item just like Link. Then there are the enemies in 3D Dot Game Heroes modeled after specific enemies in The Legend of Zelda. Enemies that look just like Tektites, Moblins, and Octoroks are everywhere, as are others that you'll find. There are also a few lines lifted straight out of The Legend of Zelda. When you receive your first sword, the king tells you it's dangerous to be alone. Some gobbles will tell you it's a secret to everybody before handing out 100 gold. One gobble will say mumble mumble and is hungry. Dragon Quest and Zelda are the big two. But the third game, which strongly influenced 3D Dot Game Heroes, is Final Fantasy. In Ray Jack Village, there's an inventor named Deke which is Sid spelled backwards. He gives you some items in the game and is always inventing. Deem is also found in Dotnia, just like Mid from Final Fantasy V. Near the end of the game, Deke mentions he's building an airship. Also in Ray Jack, a villager says, I am the book with no way, sir. This is a secret backwards message that reads, press L1 to open map. In Final Fantasy 1, the brooms in Matoya's cave speak backwards and also give hints on how to open the map by saying, When you cross the bridge after clearing the grass temple, a scenario plays similar to the true open seen in Final Fantasy 1 and 4. There's a town in Dotnia called Colneria, which is similar to Corneria from Final Fantasy 1. In different translations, the spelling has changed a few times, making this gag even funnier. In Colneria, a villager will give you the ribbon, an item found in several Final Fantasy games. She gives it to you, but she is unsure how it works. In Final Fantasy 1, the ribbon is a found item with no explanation, has very weak stats and no resale value, but does protect from all elemental attacks and insta-death spells. I didn't know what it was in 1990 myself, so this is my personal favorite gag in the game. In Ortego Village, there's a mage named Numin who will sacrifice his life to give you the Ultima Book, referring to Minwu from Final Fantasy II. Of course, it costs 99 magic points to use, and you don't have that much. Also in Ortego, you'll find Jose saving his three friends, referring to Joseph in Final Fantasy II. There are other game references which are one-offs and pretty clever if you get where they come from. When you get the dash boots from Deke, he imitates the Mega Man 2 get equipped message from Dr. Light. A guard man at Dotnia Castle asks you to rescue Superb Joe, a reference to Bionic Commando's Super Joe. There are a few modern games that make it in as well. Demon Souls is mentioned in the From Cave, as after all, Demon Souls is a From game. The Hero's Soul, Sticky White Stuff, the staff being hard at work on making a game, healing up, writing on the floor, and general messages about the game being too difficult all refer to Demon Souls. Armored Core, another From series, gets a few nods. One of the characters in the From Cave refers to a mecha game, and they do eventually present you with the Armored Core. There's also a Karasawa sword, and after receiving it, Deke calls you Raven, 
a name given to Armored Core pilots. Then there are things just general to gaming that don't fit one box. There are a few points where you can get funny responses from non-playable characters when given a choice. In some cases, choosing no will get a message saying that you can't continue the game until you choose yes. In Colneria Village, you can find a few crazy characters, Moyomoto and Luigi, referring to Luigi from Super Mario Bros. and his creator, Shigeru Miyamoto. Moyomoto talks about game design at different stages of the quest. Luigi talks about what it's like being player two. At Fina's Inn, you'll find a rather oddball character. When he speaks, he often uses the word des. This isn't specific to any game, but otaku culture in general. Des is the Japanese verb meaning to be. The word des is very flexible, and to put des after any word will make a grammatically correct sentence in Japanese. For example, game des would mean this is a game. The power of des is great and mighty. Knowledge of Des will give you the coveted, self-assessed JLPTN 2.5 ability while adventuring in Japan. And this is not even all of the references. I actually wrote out more, but decided to hold back so as not to ruin the fun of the game for everyone who ventures deep into the Kingdom of Dotnia. The ones I've mentioned here are pretty apparent, and you'll have to run into most of them anyway. But there are dozens more that you may or may not catch. On top of even more references to Dragon Quest, Zelda, Final Fantasy, and Spelunker, there are nods to Castlevania II, Gauntlet, Gradius, Golf, Kenka Bancho, Metal Gear, Metal Wolf Chaos, Metroid, Otogi, Pro Wrestling, Soul Blazer, Wizardry, East, and still other games beyond that. There are references to movies, anime, and even achieving Buddhist enlightenment. How many nostalgic references are hiding in 3D.game heroes? The world may never know. On top of the weapons, characters, and dialogue, there's the loading screen artwork. Each time you change scenes in the game, a loading screen will pop up and be saved for later viewing. 3D.game heroes has 105 loading screens that pay respects to classic video game scenes. Here they are, all of them. Number 1, Tower of Druaga. Number 2, Challenger. Number 3, Portopia Renzoku Satsujin Jiken. Number 4, Spelunker. Number 5, Okoska Wars. Number 6, Sunsan. Number 7, Hydalide Special. Number 8, Atlantis no Nazo. Number 9, Dragon Quest. Number 10, Ghost and Goblins. Number 11, Super Chinese. Number 12, Return of Ishtar. Number 13, Solomon's Key. Number 14, Adventure Island. Number 15, King's Knight. Number 16, Commando. Number 17, Madola no Tsubasa. Number 18, Dragon Quest II. Number 19, Pocket Zaurus, Ju Oken no Nazo. Number 20, Higemaru Makaijima Nanatsu no Shima Daiboken. Number 21, Rygar. Number 22, Athena. Number 23, Hokkaido Rensa Satsujin Ohotsuku Nikiyu. Number 24, Digital Devil Mono Katari Megami Tensei 2. Number 25, Ultima 3 Exodus. Number 26, Final Fantasy. Number 27, Metal Gear. Number 28, Wizardry. Number 29, Dragon Quest 3. Number 30, Captain Tsubasa 2, Super Striker. Number 31, The Quest of Ki. Number 32, Tayo no Shinden Azteca. Number 33, King of Kings. 
At number 34, Ninja Gaiden. At number 35, Final Fantasy II. At number 36, Tetris. At number 37, Mega Man 2. Number 38, Space Harrier. Number 39, Hydalide 3. Number 40, Dragon Buster 2. Number 41, Super Chinese 2. Number 42, Tenkaichi Bushi Keru Naguru. Number 43, Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. Number 44, Dragon Quest 4. Number 45, Ninja Gaiden 2. Number 46, Final Fantasy 3. Number 47, East 3. Number 48, Final Fantasy 4. Number 49, Ultima 6, The False Prophet. Number 50, Street Fighter 2. Number 51, Dragon Quest 5. Number 52, Shin Megami Tensei 2. Number 53, Castlevania. Number 54, Ogre Battle. Number 55, Forneko no Daiboken, Fushiki no Dungeon. Number 56, East 4. Number 57, Illusion of Gaia. Number 58, Super Puyo Puyo. Number 59, The Blue Crystal Rod. Number 60, Power Instinct. Number 61, Final Fantasy V. Number 62, Chrono Trigger. Number 63, Seiken Densetsu 3. Number 64, Tactics Ogre. Number 65, Dragon Quest 6. Number 66, East 5. Number 67, Bahamut Lagoon. Number 68, Chaos Seed. Number 69, East 5 Expert. Number 70, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Number 71, Chrono Trigger. Number 72, Tactics Ogre. Number 73, Spelunker. Number 74, Lemmings. Number 75, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number 76, Jaws. Number 77, Populous. Number 78, Doom. Number 79, Mist. Number 80, Wolfenstein 3D. Number 81, Secret of Mana. Number 82, Chrono Cross. Number 83, Vagrant Story. Number 84, Dragon Warrior. Number 85, Dragon Warrior 2. Number 86, Solomon's Key. Number 87, Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. Number 88, Clue Clue Land. Number 89, Ultima. Number 90, Another World, sometimes known as Out of This World. Number 91, Alakabeth, The World of Doom. Number 92, Might and Magic 6. Number 93, Dungeon Master. Number 94, The Goonies 2. Number 95, Spy vs. Spy. Number 96, Mystery House. 
Number 97, Maze War. Number 98, Final Fantasy III. Number 99, Samurai Showdown. Number 100, Contra. Number 101, Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. Number 102, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Number 103, Heidelite. Number 104, Street Fighter II. Number 105, Thief, The Dark Project. And if all of this couldn't scratch your esoteric classic gaming itch, then not even the gods of Algol could save you. When we come back, the epilogue of 3D Dot Game Heroes. Hello players, look at your kingdom's hero. Now back to me. Now back at your hero. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he was made in 3D using the 3D Dot Game Heroes character creation tool, he could look like me. Look down. Now back up. Where are you? You're in the 3D kingdom of Dot near with the hero your kingdom's hero could look like. What's in your hero's hand? Now back to me. It's a sword that shoots beams. Look again. The sword is now a giant fish. Anything is possible with the 3D Dot Game Heroes character creator. I'm a tank. At the beginning of this video, I declared that 3D Dot Game Heroes was the final great game. And I stand by that for these reasons. For me, a lot of newer games just don't resonate. That's not to say they're bad, they just aren't for me. A lot of them are just running around in an open 3D landscape from point A to point B and having a few conversations along the way. To play devil's advocate, you could say all those old games I was such a fan of are also just running around from point A to point B. But that was very enjoyable to me, while modern games just aren't. 3D Dot Game Heroes was never followed up. Not just that there wasn't a 3D Dot Game Heroes 2, but this kind of style where you blend dots and polygons was never imitated by anyone. Other new, so-called vintage games just try to keep recreating the 2D experience of days gone by. A lot of these games don't deliver anything new and they don't make me run out to go play it. I was born in the 70s. My first game experience was combat on the Atari 2600. I never imagined a game like 3D Dot Game Heroes could ever be possible. I always dreamed though that somehow it could. It's how I imagined what game characters would be like if they could somehow be alive. That connection spoke to me in a way no other game has or will. When 3D Dot Game Heroes was released, I was already over 30 years old. I've seen a lot, and I've done a lot. I don't think there's any shame in playing games for the rest of your life, but things change. The unlimited free time you once had is now very finite. Things take precedent over playing games all day. They should. There's a real world out there, and a life to live in it. I'm just grateful to have been at that place and time with this game, and close the circle on so many things. As I was nearing the end of my original playthrough of 3D Dot Game Heroes 10 years ago, I reached that realization that this would be the end of the road for me. There was no use in pretending that I could just keep playing games and they could still be as fun as this or as fun as they used to be. And if I did, I would just be going through the motions just for the sake of keeping the tradition of gaming alive. Yeah, it was time to hang it up and move on. Happy to know I could go out on one final high note. For both the Kingdom of Dotnia and for myself, the quest was over. The heroes prevailed, evil was banished, and the legends of days gone by would live on, long after those who have lived them are gone.